Uh, happy sunshine, family. Lunacy's back here. We're part four of the detention hearing transcript. All right, let's just jump right into it. We left off at the end of page 34, going into 35. We're about ready to have the detention hearing. Miss Davidson says, Your Honor, we believe that Miss Tucci Giraffe is a risk of flight, and we ask that she be detained. Judge Shirley responds, Okay, all right. Miss Tucci Giraffe, we're going to have a detention hearing. In federal court, some people refer to it as a bail hearing or bond hearing, different terms. It's probably more technically correct to call it a detention hearing, but we operate under the rules of the Bail Reform Act in the federal statutes. Are you familiar with the Bail Reform Act? No, I'm not, replies Heather. All right, continues the judge. It will... Looks like Mr. Lloyd has his handy-dandy federal rules there, and if you'll turn to 18 U.S. Code, I think it's section 3142, and you won't have time to get a complete primer on the rules, but generally, I will be looking at the factors in subsection G in making my decisions on release or detention, so you can at least have that handy to go by. So you can at least have that handy to go by. This is, this is very interesting verbiage coming out of the judge. Uh, we saw in part three he used the words mumbo-jumbo, and now he's instead of saying, it looks like Mr. Lloyd has a copy of the federal rules there, he says his handy dandy federal rules. This, what's going on with Judge Shirley here? I don't know. I I don't know if I've ever heard a judge talk like this in, in the middle of a hearing. And for all of you, who are down the gematria rabbit hole? It's interesting that it's subsection capital G. We find the capital G on the. Uh, the Freemasons logo. All right, any opening statements or you, do you just want to put on your first witness? Asked the judge. Miss Davidson responds, Your Honor, I just plan on proffering and arguing basically the pretrial services report. All right. Miss Davidson continues, Your Honor, if you, and I know that you have thoroughly reviewed this, but we argue this based on the fact of her extensive travel in the past few years. You notice that she's been in Morocco, Italy, Spain, England, Switzerland, China, and she currently resides in Massachusetts. Ah, that's interesting. Why wow, isn't it interesting that we've got hurricane or storm or manufactured whatever uh, sitting right off the coast of, of Massachusetts? That's that's interesting. She has zero ties to the Eastern District of Tennessee. No ties at all. She doesn't have employment, and we believe that she has no reason to come back and submit to this court. She has at length talked about how this court has no jurisdiction over her, and I do not believe that she will submit to any orders of this court. And based on the fact that she does not believe that this court has any personal jurisdiction over herself, we can't count on her to comply with any court orders by this court. And once she is released, I don't know how we can have any assurance that she will ever be back in, Eastern, in the Eastern District of Tennessee. So based on all this, Your Honor, we believe that the defendant is just too much of a risk of flight and should be detained. I know that that the also the fact that I don't believe that she will comply with the laws. Now we're not moving for that basis, but the defendant is on the internet at length. She has quite 
She puts out YouTube videos. She espouses the fact that everyone is entitled to a special account, which is in the Federal Reserves, and they should all go out there and access it by using the routing number. And so she's a proponent of commit asking other people to violate the law, and we're very troubled of that also. We do not believe that she will comply with the laws of the United States if she is released. However, at this point, we are most concerned that she will not comply with any bond requirements or any orders of this court, and so we ask that she not be released. Judge Shirley says, all right, anything else? No, Your Honor. All right, Miss Tucci Giraffe, do you wish to put on any evidence? Heather says, yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Judge says, uh-huh. Heather begins, well, first off, I'd like to state across the board that USA does not carry her burden. Judge says, say what? Heather says, that the U.S. attorney did not carry her burden to prove that I would be a flight risk. All of my recent movements have been to the U.S., not from. Also to, I've also made arrangements to live in housing here in your jurisdictional district. Judge says, oh, okay. Heather continues, for the duration of this case. It's already prepaid by colleagues of mine that I worked with throughout the United States, as well as internationally. This case is a matter of extreme public interest, so it behooves me to actually move forward with this case to its final disposition, whatever that may be. Also, I'm willing to comply with all the bond requirements, if any are set. I have a passport which I'm more than willing to surrender. My travel, extensive travel, over the years, I do acknowledge that I have had extensive travel, but it was for my work. I've had over 250 corporations that I had to foreclose on throughout the world, and that, once that work was done, which was January of 2016, I made arrangements for my family and myself to move back here so we could start doing the actual announcements. So all of my ties are actually with the United States. I have no residency, no residencies or ties in any other countries. Like I said, even the work that I did in those years was specifically due to making foreclosures on registrations and giving notices to them directly. Judge asks, have you traveled since May of 2016? Heather says, no, just to Washington State, where am I? Judge cuts her off, yeah. Heather continues, father is, but that's it. Judge says, okay. Heather continues, so again... I have residency, which I gave. Judge cuts her off. Where would you, where would you be residing in this district? Heather says, Mr. Lloyd has that address. Where would that be, Mr. Lloyd? If your honor, please, it's in Oak Ridge and I'm searching for the specific address. One of the witnesses here for this defendant is the person who offered that residence for rent via B&B and could inform the court about that arrangement. Judge Shirley says, okay, that's fine. So Heather says, I have a number of witnesses that have traveled from different areas of the United States to be here and more than likely a number of witnesses for myself will be here during the entire proceedings through the disposition of this case. If the court would like to hear from the property manager of where I will be staying and have already prepaid for, then the judge cuts her off, says, sure, you can call any witness you'd like. Heather says, okay. The judge says, this is your case now. You're in charge. You have to remain seated yourself, but they can come on up. Mr. Lloyd says, I was about to ask your honor whether you wanted the defendant to be at the podium. 
Judge says, yeah, if she can just move the mic closer so I can be sure to get everything down that she says. I can be sure we get everything down that she says. Ma'am, if you'll come up here, this is where the witnesses sit. So if you'll be sure to speak into the microphone so that the witness can hear you. If you'll raise your right hand, ma'am. And then the courtroom deputy says, do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? If so, please say, I do. The witness says, I do. Thank you. You may be seated. And the judge says, be sure to ask her her name and how to spell it. Heather says, okay, you can have a seat. Yes, says the judge. Heather says, Your Honor, I'm not able to see her. Judge says, Okay, do you want to come up to the podium? Heather says, If I might. Judge says, All right, if the marshals have no objection, we'll have her come up to the microphone, and they'll be right behind you. Thank you. No, you can stay. Oh, and the witness says, Oh, okay. The judge says, Seated. She goes up there, not you. Just pull that microphone down to you and speak right into it. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And then we have a change in the heading here. Marie Wasilic, I think I'm pronouncing that name right, direct examination. Whereupon, Marie Wasilic was called as a witness and, after having been first duly sworn, testifies as follows. Direct examination. Interesting. We saw this verbiage before, uh, you know, was called after having first duly, uh, been first, (laughs) been first duly sworn, testifies as follows. Um, But it's interesting that this is following the verbatim verbiage from the courtroom deputy up here swearing her in. So the verbiage of the swear-ins is now being reported in these transcripts. And we still have the same verbiage before that I was pointing out that, wow, I don't like the way that this was just encapsulated under one sentence. We don't know what was said during that time period. Okay. So Heather and Marie are having a conversation. So Heather begins, good morning. Could you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? My name is Marie Suzanne Wasilik, and my last name is W-A-S-I-L-I-K. And at this hearing, we're discussing about a possible residence for me to stay in this judicial district. Could you please state the address of that particular residence? It's, and then this is the section here, this black box, uh, where Taryn Cognito uh, redacted her uh, Marie's address for privacy. Heather continues, okay, and is it correct that you are in agreement to rent that property to me? Yes, yes. For the duration of this case? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, and I believe it's, some of it has been paid already, is that correct? Correct. How much of it has been paid already? $824. And that was paid by one of my colleagues. Is that correct? And then in parentheses, uh, the court reporter uh, watched the witness moving their head up and down in response. And Heather asked, which colleague was that? Yeah, really, uh, I'm surprised that, that we didn't get a, a request of the witness from someone to please speak her answers out. Uh, I've heard that correction be made of so many people in court. I'm surprised that it's not just brought out right now. So which colleague was that? That was Bill Ferguson. And he's in the, and the judge jumps in. How do you spell that? 
Heather says, if I might, Your Honor. Judge says, yes. Heather says, it's his full name is William T. Court says, well, all I need is what she testified to, which is Bill somebody. Heather says, okay, Ferguson, F, excuse me, S-O-N is the ending of Ferguson. The court or the judge says, F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N. Heather says, yes, sir. And then Marie says, F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N. Judge says, okay. So Heather continues. And approximately how many minutes is that residence from this courthouse? I'm about 30 minutes away. I don't know how many miles that is. Okay, so about a 30-minute drive to this courthouse? Yeah. Okay. And as far as the remainder of the payment, there's a schedule. A payment schedule that's been arranged. Marie replies, right. Heather asks, correct? Marie says, right. I, I've been paid eight twenty four up front, and then there's pending payments as time goes on. Heather says, right. Okay, all right. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge says, and what are those? What are those payments? What does 824 get you? Marie says, that's for the beginning of a three-month stay. Bill Ferguson has paid up till the 27th of November. Judge Shirley says, okay. And then after that, what's the payment schedule? How much a month? Well, it seems like I've got... It ends at the 27th, but I, and the whole payment was something like $1,400, but I've only got 825 of it. So as the time goes on, I get, you know, maybe October I get, I'll get another 300 and something. I haven't studied the details. Heather says, I believe, is it? You sent over a payment schedule that another payment was due in September, towards the end of September, and another one towards the end of October. Does that sound correct? I think so. And the total is about $1,500 with the, with the service fee. Right, replies Marie. For the Airbnb website. Right that you mark it on. Right. Okay. The judge says, and how much is it a month? Marie says 1400 divided by three. Judge says, so about $466 and 66 cents. Marie says it's quite cheaper than it's around $15 a day. Okay, that's fair enough. Okay. And is it a separate residence? Asked Heather. It's a little mother-in-law apartment within my house. It's got a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom with a trundle bed, and a little living room. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. Judge says, thank you very much. Anything from you, Miss Ms. Davidson? Ms. Davidson says, yes, Your Honor. All right, so now cross-examination by Ms. Davidson. Ms. Tucci Giraffe keeps talking about William Ferguson being one of her colleagues. Colleagues in what? Marie says, I don't know. And what is your relationship with Mr. Bill Ferguson? He's a friend of mine. And do you have any prior relationship with Ms. Tucci Giraffe? No. Do you also live at this residence? Yes. And so tell me exactly how this whole transaction occurred. Did Mr. Ferguson find out you had a room for rent? Right. He searched the Airbnb and found and was looking for a place to house Heather for three months. And so you have no relationship with the defendant? No. So you would, simp so you would be simply a landlord? Correct. Yeah. And what does Mr. Ferguson do? 
I think he's an IT guy, and he's getting his PhD in some kind of rocket space science. <laughs> Do you have a job? No, I'm a retired, retired mail carrier. May I have a minute, Your Honor? Asked Miss Davidson. You may. That's all I have. Thank you, says Miss Davidson. Judge says, all right, anything further, Miss Tucci Giraffe? Uh, just, Your Honor, that Mr. Lloyd has pulled up the actual receipt for the payment as well as the payment schedule from an actual Airbnb website that most people who rent their properties on. Judge says, okay. So that we do have an actual receipt, continues Heather. All right, replies the judge. That can be made available to, and the judge cuts her off. I don't think anybody questions that she's been paid $824. Okay, replies Heather, just a matter to clean the record. I have one question for her. Sure, sure, absolutely. So the redirect by Heather. Just to clean up the record, you mentioned that Mr. Ferguson was getting his degree for a rocket, for rocket scientist. Is that perhaps what his daughter is getting who works for NASA? Wow, just some interesting tidbits that are laden all throughout these transcripts, guys. Marie replies, I was just reading his profile on the Airbnb, so I, maybe I was confused. Heather says, okay, all right. Just any other, was there any other contact by any other, by, excuse me, hold on. Okay, all right. Just any other, was there any other contact by any of my other colleagues to be able to check out the room or rent the room. It was just William Ferguson that you spoke to? Yeah. Okay, thank you, no further questions. Judge says, thank you. Anything else, Miss Davidson? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Ms. Wasilek. You can. She says, thank you. And then judge continues, have a seat back in the audience. Thank you, ma'am. Marie says, I gotta pay my parking meter. Heather says, thank you. Court says, all right, do you have any other witnesses? Heather says, if I might have just a second, Your Honor. Sure, absolutely. Heather says, the only other thing I would like to ask the court for permission is for my husband to hand me my passport so that I can at least present it to the court showing that it's here so that if there is a recommendation for surrendering it, to be able to have personal recognizance or to go by the probation's report, the court knows that it's here. Judge Shirley says, I have no problem with that, but I just ask him to hand it to the marshal. Heather says, yes, sir. And let the marshal hand it to Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd can present it to the court. Heather says, thank you. So Mr. Lloyd has the passport. Is that the only passport you have? Asked Judge Shirley. It is the only passport I have. Okay. And I'm willing to surrender that for the duration of this case until disposition is made. Judge says, okay. Heather continues. I also would like to confirm to the court that I would be staying. If the court agrees to this, that I would be staying at the residence that has been offered by witness testimony for the duration of this case until disposition is made. Judge says, okay. Part of the question, of course, the court would have is who's going to pay for the rest of the three months and who's going to pay after that? Heather answers, as far as the rest of the three months, or if this case goes longer and we have to extend the stay, it will be myself. I plan on doing any kind of work that I'm able to once I get out. I have a, I do have a lot of contacts and most of my work is, can be done at home, producing documents, etc. Document data processing, as well as any of my former colleagues. And when the state had asked about colleagues, these are people I've worked with in media. They're people I've worked with in, on different industries, such as medical, et cetera, that have, are in support of all this information coming out. 
and that I stay here for the duration of this case so that information so that that information can come out because it is judge says would it require you to travel outside of this area no no I can stay here I do not need to travel except for to visit with my attorney or to come to court judge says all right there's a gentleman in the back that raised his hand when I asked who was going to pay for all of this and what's your name sir William Ferguson is the reply. Judge says, well, your name has been taken. Wouldn't say it in vain, but it's been uttered here. Wow, so the judge is saying some interesting words here. Well, your name has been taken. Wouldn't say in vain, but it's been uttered here. Are you willing to continue to pay the rent on Ms. Wasilic's room for Ms. Tucci Giraffe for at least the foreseeable future for, say, the next six months. Yes, sir. Okay. And Mr. Ferguson says, I'm not a rocket scientist. The judge says, I'm not either. All right. Any other? If you'll hand that up, Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd says, may I approach? You may. For the record, I have shown the passport to counsel for the government. All right, if you'll just hand that to probation, I don't really need to see it. They're the ones that would secure it and maintain it. Heather says, okay, thank you. All right, Judge Shirley continues. Okay, any other witnesses that you want to call? Heather says, at this moment, Your Honor, I do not have any further witnesses nor evidence to present to this court in regards to the detention hearing matter. Judge says, okay, any further argument, Ms. Davidson? Yes, Your Honor, just regard to the residents. Your Honor, this is a, all the defendant has offered is that she has a resident available to her in Oak Ridge prepaid by someone else. There's still no evidence that she would actually go there. She has that ability if she chooses to, but her family, her husband, her four kids all reside in a different district. She still, with the exception of showing that she has an apartment available for her use if she chooses to use so, has not shown any ties to this district. And so we, and we continue to point out that she does not believe that this court has any jurisdiction over her. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge says, all right, Ms. Tucci Giraffe, do you have any argument to make on your behalf? Heather says, yes, your honor. All that the government has offered assumes that I will not honor my obligations to this, to bail or to court or to the honor of the letter of the law that we are addressing in these matters. I have dedicated my life for 17 years to law and I understand when there, regardless of whether there's a disagreement or a different position, As far as what law is applicable, I have always, always gone in to reconcile those matters in a very peaceful way and always honoring my obligations. I have sworn to this court under oath that I am going to be making these court appearances. You have already on the record that I did have a criminal matter that I had to attend to in Washington State, which I did not have any failure to appears. I've never failed to appear. I've been a member of the bar system. I've been a member of the courts, an officer of the courts at one time, and I understand the implications as well as the importance of meeting these obligations. So I have my word and my honor, and if the court requires any further assurances that I will be making these court dates other than just my word, and my performance history, then I'm willing to hear those and then make comment on that as well. I've already surrendered my passport, so I'm not able to travel, and I don't have a license, so I'm not able to drive anywhere. I'm not going to be living at that address, and excuse me, I'm going to be living at that address until this court, again, this court has resolved and disposed of this matter. Judd says, all right, So if I were to release you, you would need to sign a three-page order that we have that releases you on conditions and sets forth the conditions. 
Of course, we would provide you a copy of that so you would know precisely what all the conditions are. Are you agreeable to signing such a document? Heather says, I am agreeable to signing such a document. Judge continues, it also provides that where you sign it and before you sign it that you promise to obey all the conditions of release and appear as directed and to surrender for service of any sentence that might be imposed. Do you so agree? Heather says, I do. All right. Now, in this particular case, the assistant United States attorney has indicated that you don't have any prior residence here and that all your contacts appear to be elsewhere. Where does your husband live? My husband lives at the Lynn address. Lynn, Massachusetts. Lynn, Massachusetts, yes. Judge says, and he, and Heather butts in, but he flies here for when he can. If there's the money to afford to fly, for him to fly, he will be here at these hearings to support me. And your four children, where do they live? They live at the same address or have lived at the same address, but due to this court case, and since I'm was the primary caregiver, my sister is stepping in to help with the children to be able to get them to school and everything else because Yosef works. So they will be staying with her until this case is disposed of. Judge says, well, you said they lived at the same address. They lived in Lynn, Massachusetts. Heather says, they have lived in Lynn, Massachusetts, I said, for the same amount of time I have, but just recently we've had to have them go be with my sister and my father so that they can do schooling, and Yosef is able to work to be able to support them since I'm the primary caregiver for the children to make sure that they get to school and take care because we have four minor children, as I told Ms. Smith. Judge says, right, where do they live? <laughs> right now they are in transition over to, they're in Washington State, have been there for the last three weeks doing a vacation. But due to this case, Judge butts in again, where do they live? In Gig Harbor, Washington. Do you own any residence there? No, they are staying with my sister and my father is close by to a sister. Okay, Miss Davison also raised the specter of no employment, but you've indicated to me that you intend to try to secure some form of employment, acknowledging that you'll have to stay in this area even if you get employed. Heather says, yes, the, I had started a startup just prior to being picked up in D.C., and that allows me, that startup allows me to work from home and to do data processing or document creation. So I'm able to work from from the residency that Ms. Wasilik gave you. All right, so that's the end of page 54. I think this is a good place to uh, pause for now. So that's part four. So some interesting things going on here uh, as they talk back and forth about her release and We'll, we'll see where this goes in the next one. I love you guys an awful lot. If you have any love lighter links for me, send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E, at protonmail.com. Bye-bye.